Week zero is the week that they get everything they need to basically survive the eight and a half weeks of base military training. They're clothed in zero week. They're, they're given the initial shots in zero week. Their records are started in zero week. Uh, they get their hair cut in zero week. And that initial uh, shock and awe of all being put on the same playing field uh, starts the whole process. And now everyone is the same. You're all in the same uniform. Your haircuts are all the same. So very big week, a lot of, uh, a lot of yelling, <laughs> a lot of aggressive, uh, intense training going on in that week. Once again, to get all trainees on, all on the same page, to understand that this is not home anymore. Week one is a, for, for recruiters is, is a processing week. Just getting them acclimated to and getting them processed into the military, getting all their records squared away, those type of things. There are some small academic classes that they will go through to teach them rank recognition, uh, customs and courtesies, things of that nature. Another thing that happens on week one is getting introduced to your weapon where you uh, uh, issued your first M16 trainer weapon, you're know, responsible for knowing its serial number, you're taught how to, uh, all the parts and pieces of it, how to clean it, how to break it down, how to reassemble, uh, and just the basics of safety. That's the big one. When we issue that weapon, we teach you the basics of it, but we really, really harp on the safety from the moment that we put it in your hands. And as you start to understand that, then we can go into, I guess you could say, bigger and better things, how you transit with your weapon, how they apply to the integrated base defense in later weeks of training. You receive your trainer weapon in the first week of training, and you learn immediately how to disassemble and reassemble your weapon. The minimum time requirement for the M16 is two minutes for disassembly and two minutes for reassembly. Now, the purpose of disassembling and reassembling the weapon is so that in the field you know how to repair your weapon if necessary. And the second week of training is when you uh, start your, start really focusing on a lot of transitory drill. You will uh, learn you know, basic survival skills in IBD uh, one. Interview sessions where you'll start to, uh, you'll be briefed on the different types of jobs that you can have out in the operational Air Force. Start to understand why you're in basic military training. Start to understand why your instructor is so uh, hard on you as far as discipline is concerned. Why he's so hard on you, why he harps on attention to detail. So once again, a processing week, but it's still, still uh, at a basic level. Self-aid and buddy care starts in week three. They take these skills that they've learned in this week, they uh, apply it throughout until they get to the sixth week of training where they're actually given a test. They're able to apply it in uh, somewhat similar real life scenarios that kind of resemble what might go on when they get out of PMT. If they're bleeding on the battlefield or if they have fractures, we're here to give them the necessary skills so that they can be able to take that wherever they're fighting or wherever they have their peacetime as well. What they're doing right here, they're preparing these trainees for uh, head wounds, abdominal wounds, and also open uh, chest wounds as well. These victims have head wounds and they're choking and gargling blood, so we need to get them to their side. One of the things I learned today was a sucking chest wound. We learned how to put an airtight seal on it. We could improvise with anything from a credit card to a piece of plastic. You have to tape it on all four sides to make sure no air gets in there so if they're breathing it won't suck any kind of chemicals or dirt into it. All right, what you're looking at right now is the combat application tourniquet, also known as a cat. Uh, it's very easy to put on, but if they don't have that, then there's another one that they use over here called the improvised tourniquet. You gotta find sticks, you gotta find strips. Coming through this program, I, I see the trainees becoming more confident as they get that on-hands training. It helps us out in real life, too. If something happens to one of our family members, somebody gets a fracture in their leg, you know, in real life, we'll be there to take care of them. And also gives them the necessary know-how to save someone's life, because within two minutes, if that person is not saved or not taken care of, they can either lose a, a life or a limb. Week four is uh, probably, I guess you could say, an extension of week three, really. Uh, th those 
two weeks are, are really two weeks that we really, really hone in on all the specifics that they're going to need to be successful at, at Warrior Week or at the Beast. Another big thing in week four is weapons evaluation. That's where they actually evaluated on how well they can assemble and disassemble the M16A2 rifle that they've been carrying for the last three and a half weeks. The obstacle course uh, also happens a week of training for. A uh, goal behind that is teamwork, confidence, the ability to attempt an obstacle that you've never seen. Uh, it is a really, really big day for a flight. They really look forward to it. They start to understand, you know, I can't do this alone. Uh, I'm, I'm going to need help no matter what my previous experience was. So the obstacle course is a big day for them, especially in the area of teamwork. Week of Training 5, they prepare. They finalize everything that they learn in Week of Training 3, Week of Training 4. They start to understand uh, and get briefings on what's going to be expected. Uh, jobs are assigned. People sticks uh, also happen in Week of Training 5. It's where they go out and learn uh, some hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Gives them a chance to release a little bit of aggression that they may have built up over the last few weeks. Uh, they enjoy it. Uh, it's really safe, but it uh, gives them an opportunity to go out and, and practice those hand-to-hand -hand skills that they've learned in the third and fourth week through some of the IVD classes. Beagle Sticks is where they go out and learn the things that they will be able to use while handling their M16 training weapon. How to use the weapon other than a firing weapon. How to use it for the butt stroke and the slash. The key thing is keeping your feet shoulder width apart. The butt stroke, if you stroke up as such, the smash, you're from this position, you step forward and you push in. The thrust is just simply going in towards the navel area. And the slash is going in the opposite shoulder of your opponent and slashing down for, for their collarbone region. Good, solid hit, good job. You're trying to learn awareness, your environment, what's going on around you at all times so you can be always be prepared for anything that happens. is a week-long exercise altogether, where trainees are going to be thrust into a situation where they have to form a team in the first couple days. You and Jackson, you and Jackson, get right here. They're gonna have to provide security for their own camp, 360 degrees of security, five DFPs around every zone. They will encounter insurgents. Alarm black, mop zero, initial release. Alarm black, mop zero, initial release. What just happened just now, and we were under attack. Everybody sweeps around the area looking for damage, unexploded objects, casualties, and contamination. We found an unexploded object, put a, a barrier around it. Then we looked for casualties. We attended to all the hurt people, dressed their wounds, got them to the medical tent as quickly as possible. You get to put everything you learned in BMT into action. When you come out here, you really see that. Every little detail counts, because if you're not paying attention, it could cost people their lives. Keep it up, got it? Yes, sir. The trainees are out here committed to the mission. They feel a pride and ownership in their zone. You ask any of the trainees what zone they're from, they're going to sound off loud and proud. Yes, sir. The tactical deployment course is conceived as a chance for the trainees to employ the tactical movements that were taught in garrison. They'll have to determine at what point is it appropriate to low crawl, at what point is it appropriate to take cover. They'll even encounter a series of strike dummies. They'll have to make that determination of, am I going to use the slash, am I going to use the butt stroke, what rifle fighting technique works best in this situation. Communicate, open your mouth, say something. Oh, <laughs> They're on their own. We're just out here monitoring everything that they do. We give them feedback on how they did. We give them direction. But they're pretty much on their own while they're out here. We see a huge transformation from these trainees that have little self-confidence. Then they come out here, they take full independence, and they build this up themselves. This is their beast. They're to get each other. Dig deep. Let's go. 
One of the most physically challenging parts is at the end, there's a high crawl and the hill is a lot steeper than it looks. So you see the trainees, I mean, they're just dragging themselves up here. On that final crawl, it is the final stretch for their tactical deployment course. I always tell them, if you can make it to the top of the hill with your wingman, it's gonna taste better than pancakes. That was one of the hardest things I've done in a long time. I was very tired, however, we had to push and fight through. We could not stop until we made it to the top. Just knowing that you're, you're able to accomplish this type of feat is, is real motivating. You see where they, they, they build their confidence because a lot of them want to give out. The wingman helps them push through. And then once they get done, I would say 99.9% .9 of them have felt the difference and, and they feel like they've actually accomplished something. Every training I've talked to has uh, talked about what a great team building experience it was for their flight. When you ask them what their favorite part of BMT is, they say the beast. In week of training seven, you can expect to have a lot of uh, academic classes that prepare you for immediately getting out into the Air Force. Uh, things such as ethics and uh, finances, those type of things that you'll need immediately upon getting to your first duty station on you know, how to conduct yourself as an airman, airmanship core values, uh, briefings that you get from your section supervisors, those type of things are things you can expect. We've uh, We've touched on the majority of the warrior skills through the first six weeks. Now we want to end load you with the things that you need to become a better airman. Week eight is a culmination week. Chance off, you made it to the eighth week of training, you've succeeded. You've succeeded in, in whatever your reason was for coming here. Graduation week, uh, first chance you get to see your families uh, through the airman's run. Go through a retreat ceremony also held in the eighth week of training. And then your last graded items are also held in the eighth week of training where you culminate probably one of the biggest esprit de corps and teamwork builders known to man, in my opinion, which is drill. You get opportunity to go out and perform your warrior flight drill. You get opportunity to do your final open ranks inspections, those type of things, just getting you prepared to move on to, uh, to the next phase of your Air Force career. And they're very proud of themselves and they're not afraid to admit it, that their confidence level has increase drastically and they're not afraid to admit it, which is which is a great feeling for the trainee and the instructor. The Airman's Run is a celebration of their achievements here at BMT. And it's an opportunity for the families to come down to see the change that has been made in these individuals since they got here. This is the first time they get to see them. We're here to see Andrew Paris, my son. This has been the longest we've been away from him. I miss him very much. My son Carlos is going to be graduating and I can't wait to see him. I'm here to watch my son. He's just going to join the Air Force and he's going to follow my footsteps. They get out there, they're in their selective squadron t-shirts, they're proud, and their mothers and fathers, girlfriends, brothers, sisters, the whole clan is out there screaming and cheering them on. do this run, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just one of those things that, you know, hey, I've made it, I'm there. I almost need to recognize my son. We're really proud of him because he's one of the older guys here. That's our boy. I think that airman's run and the graduation kind of encapsulates everything that they've gone through through the eight and a half weeks one of the greatest transformations that you can never see someone go through.